I hear that train a coming, it's rolling round the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when. I'm stuck in Folsom prison and time keeps dragging on. But that train keeps a rolling on down to San Antone. And when I hear that whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. I bet there's rich folks eating on that fancy dining car. They're probably drinking coffee and smoking big cigars. Well, I know I had it coming. I know I can't be free. But those people keep a moving, and that's what tortures me. Well, if they freed me from this prison, if that railroad train was mine, I bet I'd move it on a little further down the line. Far from Folsom Prison, that's where I want to stay. And I'd let that lonesome whistle blow my blues away. Prisoners yearn for freedom. Everyone yearns for some form of freedom. Now, everyone, whether they'll admit it or not, is in some form of a prison. Jail cells, yes, of course. But there's also prisons of debt, prisons of disease, prisons of bad habits, of addictions, Prisons of negative thought patterns and depressive attitudes. Prisons of anger. Prisons of bitterness. The list really is endless. Now, a quick question for you. Anyone here ever sinned before? Ever done wrong? Now, I didn't ask for a show of hands. That was... <laughs> well... I, I think we're unanimous in, in our understanding that all of us, all of us have sinned. Jesus says in John 8, verse 34, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. You see, every human being, all of us are sinners. And therefore, every human being is a slave To sin. And the problem is, is that most people don't recognize that they are enslaved to sin. They're like the people in our text this morning in John chapter 8, beginning with verse 31. Jesus said to the people who believed in him, that would be people like us. You are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. <clears throat> In verse 33, they say, But we're descendants of Abraham. We have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean we will be set free? And Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave of sin. You see, the people believe themselves to be free. But what we need to understand is you don't have to be behind bars to be in a prison. Anything that controls your life is your prison. And that's why it's so important, for instance, when working with people with addictions, is they have to come to a place of saying, I am an addict. As long as someone maintains that they have control over the problem, you really can't help them. You know, I can stop drinking anytime I want to. I just choose not to. Or, I don't have a problem with anger. You just make me mad. Uh, you know, I, I hope nobody finds out that I'm looking at pornography. I never have enough money. I, I think I'll go shopping in order to make myself feel better. Some of our enslavements are not that obvious, though. Things like arrogance, pettiness, jealousy, laziness, gluttony, hatred, envy, pride, perversion. The list again is is endless. Jesus said, everyone who sins is a slave of sin. But again, until a person recognizes that they are enslaved and they want out of that prison Until they get to that place, there there really is no help for them. In prisons, there are people, inmates, who want to stay in prison because in prison, all their needs are met. 
They don't have to do anything. They're, they're going to be cared for. And those inmates are known as institutionalized. The thing is, is with sin, a lot of people are institutionalized in their sin. Because sin, whether we want to see it and understand it this way or not, sin fulfills desires in our lives. We wouldn't do them if they didn't fulfill desires in our life. We overeat because it makes us feel secure. We're angry because then we feel like we're in control. We're arrogant because it hides our, our insecurity. Every sin we have is meeting some sort of need that we have in our life. And until you recognize the poverty of your life under sin's control, you can't be free. I don't care who you are. If you're rich, poor, man, woman, child, successful, failure, it doesn't matter. We are all slaves of sin. But when a person comes to that place in their life where they realized, I hate this sin in my life. I hate what it's doing to me. I hate who I am because of this sin that's in my life. I want to be free from this. When a person reaches that point, that's when God can step in and change that person's life. Now, Jesus says that we have a way to freedom. Jesus says, you will know the truth. Verse 31, the people said who believed in him, or he said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus is the truth. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Truth is not a concept. It is a reality. Pilate, in, in John chapter 18, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? And the better question for Pilate should have been, who is truth? Because truth was standing right in front of him. Truth, by definition, is a fact, a reality. Jesus is the truth incarnate. Follow my line of reasoning here. Since God is the author and sustainer of everything that exists in, in all of creation, and since God alone is the one who determines right and wrong, then ultimately, God alone is the one who determines truth and defines truth. And since Jesus is Emmanuel, God among us, Jesus is truth. Now, when Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, what he is in essence saying is, you will know me. And the more you know me, the more you will become free, not just from, from sin itself, but from the consequences of sin. He frees us from the self-deception that comes from living in sin. And he frees us from the deception that Satan uses against us. The truth in Jesus shows us the way to eternal life. I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, and Jesus frees us from those corrosive effects of sin in our lives. And, and, and so when we are in Jesus, we are free indeed. Now in verse 31, he says, You are my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. It is... Our choice, thus the if, what he's saying is, if you abide in me, if you, you stay faithful to me, every day of our lives, we must make the choice 
to pick up our cross and die to our own wants, our own desires, our, our own wishes. Every day we have to say, I set me aside in order to follow the path of discipleship in Jesus Christ. If you remain faithful to my teachings, that means that you continue to learn, you continue to apply the teachings of Jesus to your life. Now, I'm going to kind of go off on you a little bit here. Uh, Remain with me, please. We grew up, I grew up in this mindset, and I'm speaking to all of us good Baptists out there, where you come to church and you do your thing at church, and then you go home and you live your life. That is a lie from hell to live that way. We are full, people, our our churches are full of people who are hypocrites because we come to church and we put on our church look and our church language and all of that stuff, and then we go out there and we live like hell. And every day, that's what's been going on for centuries, for generations. People who live this double life. They act good and Christian when they're at church. And then when they get away from church, they have a completely different lifestyle and a completely different mindset. May I say to you this morning, if you are not in, if you consider yourself a born again Christian, and if you are not in the word of God, if you are not a person who is doing the best you can to walk in faith with Jesus Christ, if you are not trying to read your Bible and understand your Bible, if you are not trying to soak up the Word of God, then you are deceiving yourself. You're living a lie and you need to fix it. I don't know how to say that any clearer. Fix it. Because what you're doing is you are not living the Word of God. And if you're wondering what does that look like, read Romans chapter 2 today when you get home. Romans chapter 2. Because Paul goes off on the Romans for doing that very same thing. You know, you, we, we make such a big deal out of all of those bad sinners out there, but we're doing the exact same things they are. How can we expect not to be judged by God when we're doing the same things that everyone else is doing? So, if you remain faithful to my teaching, we must be faithful to following the path of Jesus Christ. When we do that, we will know the truth. And... We need to understand this, seeing that all of us are sinners. All of us are enslaved by sin. All of us are separated from God until Jesus Christ comes into our lives. And the only salvation God offers and the only salvation that God will accept is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And if that is not your understanding of salvation, you are lost. You are separated from God. Jesus says you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teaching. In order to know something, we must get it in our brain. We must must get it through studying the Word and observing and studying. And once once we do that, it's kind of like marinating meat. You know, the meat absorbs the marinade. What we do is we marinate in the Word of God. And then it gets into our spirit, it gets into our character, it gets into our conduct, and it becomes a part of who we are. This is the process known as sanctification. Knowledge of the truth of the Word of God doesn't happen by accident. You can't become godly because you show up to church. 
You become godly because you engage in the Word of God and you allow the Word of God to transform you from the inside out. When that happens, the truth will make you free. We, when, when we know the truth, it's the truth of Jesus Christ that liberates us, that changes us, that makes us new creations. Truth goes to work in our lives and it breaks the chains of sin that, that are in each and every one of our lives. Ungodly habits, deceptions, lies that we have believed, all of those things begin to break down the more we are in the truth of Jesus Christ. When we, we actually live out God's truth, then we, we become transformed. Romans says that we are transformed by the renewing of our minds through the reading of God's Word. It's truth that breaks the sin in our lives. And that truth is Jesus Christ. We're also freed from the consequences of sin, spiritually speaking. You know, I hope this doesn't come as a shock to anybody. All of us, one day, are going to die. I'd hate to, hate to bring you down there. But, but the reality is, is we all are experiencing the consequences of sin in our lives. Every single one of us. Anyone here got arthritis? Anyone here have heart condition? Ooh, that's me. Uh, anybody here dealing with poor eyesight? Anyone here ever had a cold? Uh, anyone here had COVID? Uh, guess what? That's the consequences of sin in our lives. All of us. Every, anyone here ever had a hangnail? Okay, I just got all of us now. So understand that all of us deal with this. And so we, we are free from the consequence of sin, which is spiritual death, but we will always experience the effect of sin in our lives. We live in a broken world, but we are freed from the curse of of sin, which is eternal spiritual death. Now, Jesus says this, and the people there go, well, we're, we're descendants of Abraham. Uh, we've never been slaves to anyone. And I find this really funny considering these people were living under Roman occupation. You know, they had an occupying army who stood there with shields and spears, who told them what they could and couldn't do, and they're saying, we're not slaves of anybody. <clears throat> what is our answer to the truth that Jesus offers? Is it full of pride and arrogance like these people? Now, we've never been slaves of anyone. We say it differently. We say things like, well, I'm, I'm not a sinner. There are a lot of people who are a lot worse than me. I'm not as bad as, as John Bagley. I, I mean, um, you know. See, I didn't even pick on you for a change, Robin. <laughs> you know, you know that, that's our mentality. Is that somehow it's, it's a, a waiting game. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Slave is the master. And because we all sin, we are all under the power, its effects, its penalty. And the only way to be free from that is if we remain faithful to the teachings of Jesus and we allow Christ to transform us through Himself. Romans 3.23, everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. 1 John 1.8, if we claim we have no sin, we're only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. Sin has power and control over our lives. So Jesus, and Jesus alone, provides freedom. He provides liberty from the slavery of sin. Now, 
understand that sin is corrosive. It's not just something that we do wrong, like there it is and that's it. It, It's something that eats at us. It, It tears us down. With sin comes guilt. With sin comes deeper entanglement (coughs) to sin. The longer we sin, the deeper our enslavement. This is my own belief, but when you look at children, more children accept Christ than adults. And I think that the reason that more children accept Christ than adults is because adults have been under the the enslavement of sin longer. It's harder to break through to them. They are more encrusted with the corrosiveness of sin. So Jesus is here saying that the truth is is going to free us from from this this corrosive, this this evil that controls all of us. This is how it happens. As His disciples, we walk the path of obedience, of following Jesus. And you you begin or you continue in the discipline of, Oh, we hate that word. The discipline of remaining faithful to Him and His teaching. When we do that, we will begin to experience the freedom that comes from knowing the truth. Jesus offers us a place in His family. He offers us forgiveness of sin. He offers us adoption into the family of God and into His house forever. We often misunderstand. um, It says, you know, Jesus says, in my house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to my father to prepare a place for you. It is a mispronunciation, and I know some of you are going to be shocked by this. It is a mistranslation, the word mansions in the King James Version. I know that that's, that's almost heresy there. Uh, but understand that in the Bible times, a person would move, when a husband and wife got married, they moved into the father's house and they would just add a room on and that became theirs. And when a, another son got married, the, he and his wife would move into the house and they'd add another, another room on. That's the picture of what's happening in heaven, is there are rooms being added to God's palace. We're not going to have our own little place up on the hill over there where you go fishing every afternoon. It is part of God's house. 1 John or John 1, 12 says, But to all who believed Him and accepted Him, He gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. John 8, 36, So if the Son sets you free, you are truly free. Why? Because Jesus is God. And Jesus has authority over sin and authority over the consequences of sin. And He gives us the power that to, to, in being His sons and daughters who believe in Him and who follow Him, we will continue to learn and apply His Word and we become transformed because of who Jesus is. Now, the invitation this morning is is a simple one. If you sitting here are are questioning, I'm not even sure whether I'm a follower of Christ or not. I've never really made Him the, the authority, the Lord of my life. Then that needs to be where you start. Don't assume because you prayed a prayer once upon a time that you you are a born-again Christian. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? Commit to Him. Do that today. Now, if you are a follower of Christ and you are like 
any of us, like, like me, you, you have allowed sin to creep into your life. You've allowed habits. You've allowed addictions. You've allowed things to happen to, to come into your life. Then today, repent of that. Turn away from that lifestyle and commit yourself to being an obedient follower of Jesus Christ. What the bottom line is, is do what you know God is leading you to do. Let's pray. Father, we are here for you. We are at your disposal. We are yours, Father, completely and totally. And I just pray for your com commitment to, to be set in our hearts that we won't just be casual in our relationship with you where we, we say, ah, oh, that's good enough. But that we become militant to be followers of you, regardless of the cost. That we, we set the standard so high to serve you and you alone. Father, help us. Draw us. And give us the courage to step up and become the men and women you have called us to be. So that we might know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Thank you, Jesus, for being the absolute truth. And I pray in your holy name. Amen.